See, yeah. One more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we were wondering if people were going to pay attention at all, and the answer is sort of. <laughs> See? It's just staring. My name is Spike, and that is Mootloo, and we do a podcast called the Carl Landry Record Club, which is a music podcast. And uh, we're going to do it here now, and we're going to talk to our friend Charlie Hall for more on drugs, and we'll talk to our friend Amos Lee. Connor allows us. We will talk to Connor as well. So you can either enjoy your beverages and just talk to each other, or you can listen to us. We'll just sprinkle some conversation in the background. Yeah, conversation. Yeah. Uh, can I do one thing, though? Can all the party people in the house say hey? <laughs> yeah. That does not sound like party people at all. We need, we need to run that one back it one more time. It is so one hot, and I just, I'm sweating, and I want all the party people in the house to say hey. Yeah. All right. How are we? That's the most agitated uh, warm-up I've ever heard. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I like to be agitated. <laughs> so, uh, Charlie, do you want to come up? Our friend Charlie Hall... From uh, the War on Drugs, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also from the Eagles' Christmas album. Charlie, Hello. how are we, buddy? I'm, we're great. Yeah. We. 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 I. Yeah. Speak for yourself, yeah, buddy. I'm great. Yeah. Did you hear that? Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you Have you played the Dell? Yes, we did this very this very affair. I did not know that. Um, four, five, six years ago. 2017. 2017. You do the math. Yeah. Uh, that is six years ago. Okay. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. It was I've the best. I love this place. I'm pretty psyched. It's I like one of Philly's secret gems, this place. When I was in high school, I remember there being shows here that I didn't go to that I wanted to go Thursdays to. Thursdays at the Dell or different? I don't remember. I it like was that's 30 always years always ago. Thing. Thursdays at the Dell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty legendary, though. A lot yeah. of the big uh, R&B shows over the years yes. have always oh, yeah. been here. Have you, have you seen shows here? I, this is actually my first time here as well. Oh, so, man. You know, You're yeah, in for it. Yeah, it's a, just this whole vibe, Fairmount Park. I, I went to Friends Select. I'm going to give a shout out to my man Jeff Dubs, co-founder of MTWB. And uh, we used to play sports right up around here, oh, soccer okay. and uh, baseball and all that stuff. So. What was your big sport? Uh, none of them, really. None of them. But, uh, <laughs> you and me both. Uh, I guess we should start a team. Yeah, we should. We should. What sports? Can should you we play do? ping pong? Do you play <laughs> ping pong? I'm good at I'm ping pong. I'm okay. You can at do ping the pickleball thing. Great. Uh, we're, we're all like doing right? pickleball. Come on. Let's start a Come ping pong league. Pickleball's over. Uh, it's over. <laughs> it's already over. I haven't even done it yet. <laughs> I've never even played it. Actually, looks awesome. <laughs> it's funny. The uh, I have this Fairmount Park memory of my friends in high school always used to say they would go to the the park, and I was like, what are they, what do they do at the park? And finally, I was at their house once. And they, we drove here, and they just sat in the park in the car smoking weed the whole time. And I was like, oh, that's what they do at we the park. We can do that sport. Yeah. yeah that's, that? uh, I can, Let's you start know. a team. Hell yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's clam baking, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's the sport of clam baking. So <laughs> before we get into, uh, into the, the important stuff, I would l you've, you're pretty ingrained in Philadelphia at this I point. You know, Ann and I were just talking about it. We, we moved here 20 years ago almost to the day. Yeah. We've been here 20 years. So how does like... It's longer than I've lived anywhere in my life. So you're like a fraud Boston person integrated whoa, in whoa, Philadelphia. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't think whoa. you were going right out of the game, I'm not from <laughs> Boston, okay? I'm born, I was born in Providence. Oh, Let's just make that clear. Okay. All right. Well, how do you, like, do you feel like a Philadelphian here? Do you yes, feel like... Yeah, 100%. This is home. For sure? Kids are growing up here. I love it here. Yeah. Proud of this city. I, 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 I love everything about it. You came here right when it started getting good. To be honest right? with you, Philadelphia, I mean, you can attest to this. Yes. Philadelphia is a different place today than it was 20 years ago in a lot of different ways, in positive ways. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, just the level of, uh, I think the number of acts across a whole range of genres who've hit nationally, internationally out of Philly is really increased probably the last decade, I would say, you know. It's yeah, a, it's become a hotbed. Of I sorts. mean, the thing that was happening when I moved here was that, that like all bands were all like playing in each other, you know, people were playing in each other's bands and like propping each other up. And it was like a really cool kind of uh, cooperative, like encouraging scene. And I actually have noticed lately, like there's this really cool new scene going on that's like very multi, like like across genre. Like there's this like, like these bands, like people that are, that are all playing and, and it's like hard to define. It's like it's like jazz kids, but it's also like a, there's like a hip hop thing to it, and it's, it's a really very cool thing happening. It's like it feels like a very Philadelphia thing. 
I was very cool. I was actually on the way up here. I was listening to Alex G, who was playing uh-huh. the, and it was. I was actually thinking about that. Yeah, from from the area as yeah. well. Thinking about how, people say uh, that people talk about rock music being dead all the time. And War right. on Drugs is ostensibly like a a rock band. Oh, good. I thought you were gonna say ostensibly dead. No, yeah. no, 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 yeah. no. I just mean. Yeah. I mean like, but Alex G. I was listening to it. I said. I, to myself in my head, I don't even know how I would classify that. Me neither. That. I don't. I, I couldn't. That's actually a great example. Yeah, it's like very hard to define. Like just pan genre, whatever. So you uh, produced the first Eagles Christmas record. Yeah. So what is? And there's. We can talk about it. Okay. Based on something that we talked about earlier, we're going to be okay. good to talk about Says what we talked about. Well, you said. Oh. Well, can we not? Yeah, yeah, sure. Are you sure? Yeah. I won't put it out till after what you are we tell talking me about? to put it out. Okay, great. Okay. So, <laughs> well, the first question <laughs> so I had. It's cagey, this guy. <laughs> well, what's it like? What's it like, uh, I guess, what are, the, what are the best thing and the worst thing about doing an album with people who are not used to doing an album, not musicians? Like, what was that like? What was the best thing about it? What was the worst thing about it? Oh, well, the best thing is, I guess, just the uh, to like the 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 thrill of like s- a, a new experience. You know, the, like the to to see somebody like jump into a zone that they're maybe not I- immediately comfortable in. You know, and th- and we're talking about. I mean, if we're talking about like you know the guys, like the players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, they're been working their whole lives like masters of this craft that they do and they're on the field and they're comfortable in their, in their position but then you get in front of a microphone and all of a sudden I mean it's weird to be in front of a microphone when you're not used to it it's like what you know you hear yourself in a different way yeah. everything's amplified and it's hard to be natural but that's like just this beautiful thing happens you know with these guys where like they work so hard at this thing that they do like on the field that that sort of work ethic and ethos just just transfers right to the studio where they're like how do i like i want to do how do i do this better like how do i make this how do i make this right like coach me show me what to do tell me what to do i'll do it i'll do it right i'll do it better let me do it again and it's it's incredible that is one of the things it's funny you you mentioned that it's one of the things i've noticed working so I've had football players work with me. You know, I had uh-huh. John Ritchie and Ike Reese here. I uh-huh. had Tiki Barber and, and Boomer uh-huh. in, fi- in New York. And f- football players like to be coached. It yeah, is my man. experience that, that they, they want to know how to be better at it, and then they want to work to be better at it, and then they want to be good at it. Yeah. As it's I don't think so er- cool. I don't think every rare, sport actually. is like that. You no, know? I think a lot of people are like, I'm me. Like, I do what I do. Right. Like it's yeah, I, it's interesting. I hadn't really thought about it like specific to football, but maybe maybe you're right. Like this, I mean, there's a lot of people on a team. I, you know, it's fifty what fifty three people. How many people on a football team? I fifty three hundred. Fifty three man roster. Go with yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. NFL sixty nine. On an NFL sixty nine. Oh, all right. Oh, nice. practice squad and such. Yeah, right. that's, six, that's sixteen more than I thought. Yeah. For going back to the math, it was fifty three at one point. That <laughs> sounds like it's, it <laughs> yeah. was different. That's some yeah. modern yeah. modern stuff, but. Yeah, maybe it is. You know, you got a lot of teammates. You got to work together. You know, yeah. it's not like you know, like hoops where you got what twelve, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen now. But yeah, now. yeah, yeah. That's you know, it's. Well, I think when you have that many people, there's like this uh, th- thing about w- really like knowing how to be part of a team and work together and be a leader and be a follower, all that stuff. And it's doing interesting. I remember hearing Malcolm Gladwell talking about like the difference between strong link sports and weak link sports, and like. You know, uh, basketball is a strong link sport where you're as best, you're as good as your best player. Interesting, but f- yeah. Football, you can only be as good as your worst player. If one person is bad, it ruins everything. That's so interesting. You know, yeah. so they all have to be on the same page at the same right, time. Right. Or it yeah. Work, I mean, there's know? like an analog probably with music too. Like a, you know, like a band is only as only as good as its drummer. Yeah. You know? well, we talk about that sometimes with like, what does a producer do? Because that can be like 50 different things, right? Right. But ultimately. It's trying to bring out the best performance you can get. I mean, there's the level of yeah, being yeah. in the trenches with the songs and the arrangements and all that. But it's yeah. but there is kind of a parallel there with sports in that, it's a especially if it's a band kind of lineup. You know, sure, it's just about people. It. It's about hu- we're all humans. It's just about putting the right people together. Yeah, and like making people f- comfortable so that they can be their best self and succeed. You know what I mean? It's like it's just about I don't know. For me, like 
personally, I work best when I'm comfortable. I mean, I, I know that there's like people that thrive on discomfort and you know th things that happen in, in that way too. And there, there's, I know there's like a there's a science to that too, like the Dylan thing or something. But you know, I personally like I work best when I'm comfortable. So like I feel like with producing, it's like a combination of putting the right people together and and then like making sure people are comfortable and like having fun and laughing and being themselves. It, we'll get to comfortable in a second because it's 100 degrees and you're wearing a suit. So <laughs> uh, th th uh, comfortable is different for everybody. So yeah. can we can we say the thing that's going to sure. happen? I don't know. Talk to Connor. Where's Connor? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we've, been, we've been hanging out. There's going to be. Yeah. We'll say. Well, we've been hanging out, making okay. music. All right. Some more music? Sure. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. More, is this, it is a, this is a conversation that's happening and not happening. Well, I mean, he told me, he texted, but that's okay. <laughs> we don't have to go to... So, making more music. Making more music with more people and... All right. Uh, continuing to push, you know, like, just keep keep growing and... and building like off that energy of the... Building yeah. off that energy, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's awesome. Before... I had a couple questions about your solo record before okay. you go. Yes, yeah, so we got to get into that because I wanted to wow, really have a chance cool. to talk to you about yeah, that. All right. So we'll have to have you on the pod to talk fully about the solo record. Full deep record. dive. We're okay. going to do a deep dive. It's called sure. Invisible Ink. It's called Invisible Ink. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? I, d I haven't read any interviews. I haven't heard. This. Okay. I have my own theory Neither about why it's called Invisible Ink. Okay. Is there a reason? So can I give you my theory? Yes. Okay. I'm so ready I'm for it. The, the album is beautiful. But Thank it you. is, uh, there's no words. No. It's instrumental. It is instrumental. But there were often times where I was like, ah, this is instrumental, but I, like, I feel words. I feel like in his mind, Great. there is a story here. Great. And yes. the invisible ink are the words that are not there, yet are there. That's, that's, uh, that's beautiful. It's not true. <laughs> it's, I mean, I hadn't <laughs> thought of it exactly that way. Yeah. But yeah, there, that, that, that makes a ton of sense. I mean, I, I thought about it a little more like this is the first time I really kind of like reached within and, r and, and wrote my own music. Like I've always loved helping other people realize they are yeah. tunes and like, you know, that sort of thing. And so I, I guess I felt like it was maybe a little bit of a metaphor for like it was all in there. I just had to kind of like sort of scratch uh, away. Like that's cool too. You know, I mean, I remember being a kid and loving like you know the little the notepad with the <laughs> invisible ink pen and stuff like that. So I guess I thought about it a little more that way, like where it was just like this stuff that was that was within or has been like bubbling up my whole life, and now that I'm you know 49, it's like well, I guess I guess maybe I can write music. Invisible ink as like a thing kind of fell off. Like, when we were kids, yeah, Invisible Ink was, like, everywhere. It was everywhere, yeah. Yeah. The heck it was like kind of late, it was a 90s thing, I think. Deep right? State got rid of Invisible Ink. Deep State got involved <laughs> yeah. in that. It's the Deep Set State. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we got there, but... Uh. Sorry. Well, I mean, <laughs> no one ever said anything about Invisible Ink going away, and then all of a sudden That's you true. wake Everyone up one day and there's no about Invisible it. Ink. If we start I'm a pickleball team, we'll have yeah. Yeah. An Invisible <laughs> Ink. I was going to piggyback one other question on that, because, like, listening to the record as a whole, it's... You have these really nice soundscapes throughout the album, but there's always a, a sense of melody, composition, arrangement. Like Thank even you. if you peel all that away. Thank you. And I was curious, what was the uh, what was the genesis of some of those songs? Was that just I well, they were e yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, they were each like born out of like an idea that came that I was sort of attached to like a place or a time in my life. So there was like songs are each like sort of about like a place where that's uh, like of import to me. So like I thought about like, for example, like on the first song, it's named after the street we lived on in San Francisco. And that was when I got really into these open tunings. And I used to like noodle around with this, like these motifs. And, and that's, that song sort of came out of this idea, this musical idea that, that I first got sort of into in the, at that place. So I was like attaching places throughout my life with experiences in my life and, uh, setting them to music you know what i mean absolutely yeah there, it has a it's like it's a weird thing to say but it has a lived-in feel the song cool like you've been Thank you, you know that's it that's creates that certain that's energy that's the coolest thing uh you could say i never never thought about that <laughs> that's cool 
I remember when uh, Jason Newstead left Metallica. Uh huh. And it was because he wanted to do his own thing on the side. Yeah. And the rest of Metallica was like, if you're a Metallica, you're not doing a side thing. So he just like left the do band. Do they not do side things? I guess they don't. They right? don't do side things. So it seems as if. Would you want a Lars solo album? I'd, I'd be interested to hear it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'd be interested to hear some sort of like James Hetfield, like acoustic. Yeah, you folk, know, folk James Hetfield. Yeah, that would like be interesting. Johnny Cash esque. Yeah. You know? But it seems, you know, har- Dave does, has solo yeah, stuff. Yeah, Nightlands. It's amazing. Um, you know, I don't, I assume Eliza will continue to do. Yeah, stuff. Robbie, Robbie has beautiful music he makes on his own. Anthony. It's, John's it's a soundtrack composer. Yeah, everybody's got things outside the, the band that. But that's nice. Yeah. It's great. I yeah. think it, I think you it, know? it only makes the band uh, more um, fertile, and, and it's it's great. Yeah, it's, it's cool that nobody's threatened by it. That it it just like it's part of everyone's thing. I don't yeah. know. I, I yeah, can no, imagine no, no, it being I, totally. Yeah. Well, um, we thank you for hanging out with us. It's so good to see yes. you guys. Yeah, and have you back for a full deep dive? Yeah, on the car. full pod. Let me get into the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that that'd be fun. Now, before we do let you go, because our, our next guest also, I'm going to ask him about what he wore as well, but well, it is very warm. Yeah. And you got the long pants and the long shirt, and it, it honestly doesn't look like it <laughs> breathes. I got my jazz cabbage socks on. You feel you feeling all right? I mean, it's I just feel great. Yeah, not hot. You're not. I sweating mean, I at feel all. like I'm making you uncomfortable. You are a little and that, bit. And that that in turn <laughs> is making me uncomfortable. I love you, man. I love you too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and thank you for. Thanks so much. Thanks, coming. brother. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks, Charlie Hall, ladies and gentlemen. Um, before we uh, we bring up our uh, our next guest, thank you, Charlie. Yeah. Give me a hug. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Thanks, brother. We started doing this podcast in the uh, in the middle of middle of COVID, like dead center of COVID, maybe yeah, like maybe six, six seven months, months in. in. Six, seven months in. We're yeah. a couple years in, and we started doing it because we, uh, we love music so much and sort of hated the way that uh, the album format, you know, became less important and people's music... Uh, New, the music that they learned about was just fee- fed through like Spotify algorithms. Like Spotify's cool or whatever, but then you just end up liking more music like the same music you already liked. And we sort of yearned for the days where you just told people about music. So the podcast, we do two albums every week. One that one of us loves and one that a listener loves that we don't, that maybe we've heard of and maybe we haven't. And we listen and we find the things that we like about it and don't say anything negative about it. Yeah, like even it's if it's not, not a down our it's not a cr- it's not criticism. It's trying to not to be too zen but unlock uh, tap into the magic of what, what makes something special even if it's not something we love inherently or would listen to but try to it's a positive slant. We're trying to go against the grain of any trolling that yes. happens in music writing. So if you love music, it's called the Carl Landry Record Club. It's on all the, you know how to get to podcasts, but uh, but please listen. And uh, what was I going to say? Oh, the only two times I've been negative that I can remember are... Moving Life Without Buildings? Well, Life Without Buildings was very, very early, and that was right, an accident. Right. But uh, <laughs> Springsteen occasionally, I'm sorry. Oh, no. And the Chili Peppers, <laughs> they made us do a Chili Peppers album. I'm sorry. We're going to have to, like, bolt it's, right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh <laughs> Amos, you want to come up? Ladies and gentlemen, Philadelphia's own Amos Lee. Hey, pal. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> buddy, am I your dog? What's, the go- what's yeah, going on? Yeah, yeah, sort of hey like. Hey, buddy, yeah. sit on the couch. Yeah. So Where we all, <laughs> the first time we met, the three of us, That's right. was seven years ago. Yes. At Union Transfer for the Make the World Better Foundation concert where Amos was the special surprise guest. Well, we kind of did this shit together. Yeah, well, I was saying, saying on some We did tunes, caramel. We did caramel, and, and I think oh, it caused Yeah, uh, we kind of got blasted for it. Yeah. Too. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think we got ripped for that. But, uh, I think someone called it icky. Yeah. Well, yeah. it is. It, it is icky. icky, but it's it icky in a good it's way. It's pretty gross. You know, right? <laughs> it is icky. It's a little bit icky. Have Have you played the Dell before? I or? just have to say, it's so cool on stage. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's crisp, isn't it? It's very crisp. It's perfect for this kind of attire. See, that, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Amos is wearing a short sleeve T-shirt, a long sleeve T-shirt, and a sweater and pants. It's like you're and trying to set a record. And shoes. And shoes. Yeah, you feeling all right? I feel fucking great. Yeah, you feeling good? This feels really, really good. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have the shade. We have yeah, the, the if plants. You, there's a nice breeze here. All these plants. Yep. It's good. So since meeting uh, me seven years ago, I guess I would just say, ask like, how much better are your lives now, having met me seven years ago? <laughs> so I know, much. I know <laughs> a lot more about like <laughs> conspiracy theories <laughs> and <laughs> weird shit. If you want to get into the deep state, <laughs> we Spike can, is your man. Yeah. Spike is your guy. <laughs> if we can get into the deep state. I also can't believe how much I know about the Sixers because I'm yeah, your well, that's a that's a Rice to Ricky Sanchez podcast. Yeah, that's baby. A, a sad it's thing. Horrible. Yeah, it's sad for <laughs> all ten, of us. Ten years <laughs> in on that now. You just hit the ten year. Ten mark. years. Oh. Ten years of doing that podcast. Cheers, yeah. man. And you, know, you need to do another one too. Just because. Another podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm I'm bored. That's yeah. Uh, you know, you've been, uh, both of you actually have been, we were talking about like the scene here getting better. We were talking over there, like sort of the music scene. And then with Charlie, uh, we were talking about it. How have you seen the change in, in Philadelphia as far as a place for music now compared to when you started? It's always been pretty great. You think so? I mean, Philadelphia International is not so bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's just, it, but it feels like <laughs> Sigma Sound. Don't you think? Don't you think? Well, I'm not talking about as far. I, but I think as a, almost as a brand and a community, it feels different Philly? today than it felt then. You don't think so? When, like 2002? Yeah. Three. Twenty years. I don't know. Oh is man. Is it better? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, I would look well, back I think and the world is just a bit softer. Well, you think the world is softer? I think the music world is softer. I think Philly is softer. Philly is, uh, since the Super Bowl win, Philly is definitely softer. Softer and sweeter? <laughs> softer and sweeter. Edge. <laughs> we lost our edge since the Super Bowl. Yeah, it definitely. Yeah, everybody in Philly is just like, no, nah, we're good now. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it I is, don't know. I think yeah. there's a ton of great music here, but there's yeah. always kind of been a, a lot of great music here. Maybe not to this level. Yeah. Like a lot of, like, the war on drugs have been killing it yeah alex g is amazing yeah um just i could honestly name like 10 bands that are amazing but then you have the roots and you have jill scott and you have yeah 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 music soul child and you have boys to men and then you can just kind of go back through hall and oats and eras and eras philly's always been pretty rich i think my perception is me and maybe it's a national perception about here but my perception is back then People didn't know that those artists were from here. Boys to Men, they did. But generally, it wasn't thought of the same way that New York or L.A. or, you know, Nashville or, or something like that. But Philly, at least as a We have a music profile. called The Philly Sound. Well, all right, fine. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's good. Well, yeah. I'll say, we I'm got a, some shit. Yeah. I'll say just even uh, Amos and I become a friend. I mean, that was kind of the singer-songwriter scene around yeah. 2003, 2004. Yeah, not a, yeah, we don't have a ton of that kind of music that's come out not of here. Not a ton, but that was its own little, yeah. little thing that like, w People was are amazing, nurturing though. and supportive. Yeah, like a Moot. All, yeah, dude. The music here has been amazing for a long time. I think every time I go to another city, I always tell people, like, move here. Because we have XPN, which is incredible. Like, yeah. they've always sure. played local artists, and you can build a really good regional following. We have great venues. We have, like, a really cool music community. It's not a place where people go out, like, every night, like Nashville, where there's a million musicians in town. But I think it's great. I, there's, no, there's no other city I would have wanted to start in or kind of come up in than this town. It's a place you can make a career. And you can definitely go national because there's so many bands that have, but it, without the heavy industry weight of like Nashville or LA, that there's a different, there's more of a feeling of community and support. Yeah, um, not to not industry. to mention like Curtis, Philadelphia Orchestra, right? Like the whole classical music scene here is just unbelievable. It's we have the best orchestra in the country. We should mention you just performed with them last yeah. month. That was uh, that was yeah, a special night. They're right? amazing. They're, yeah, they're. Unbelievable, and they source so much of it from Curtis and from all the stuff locally here. It's this, I don't know. Honestly, I talk to a lot of people about where they're going to move because a lot of people are like, you know, newer artists, especially. It's hard to break, it's yeah. hard to break, yeah. Um, and I talk to a lot of young artists about like what to do to break, and I'm like, why don't you just move to Philly, get a place where you can afford, hang out, make your music. And start from here. You don't have to live in New York and pay three thousand dollars a month. You can live here for three, four hundred, five hundred bucks a month, 
and do your thing, you know? That's what I think. I always say keep your overhead low and move and move with your art. The uh, the break thing is interesting because as the barrier to entry got easier, right? Because any it's easier to make music at home now. It's easier to get it to people, yeah. but it just means there's more, and it means actually there's more good, but there's also more bad, and it gets harder for people to sort through. And I think the the idea of building in a community as opposed to trying to do it like to everyone all at once, it gives you a, a focus and a you know, uh, you almost try to ride a wave rather than try to hit everybody, you know? I don't know. What do you think, Moot? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, grassroots, the one thing yeah. that can't be replaced is, uh, you know, music is about ultimately where it comes up a lot, but it's about building a community around you. And uh, no matter what happens in the industry, commercial success, lack of commercial success, if you have people that, like, you care about that you want to work with, and build with good things are going to happen. That's a, that's that's my take on it. I mean, that, that's your that's your Teflon against all the negative things that happen. Then the again, business. I've been working for twenty years, and I'm most well known as a puppet. That's uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Not most well known. Where is he, by the way? Just Where in a he? segment of. Uh, he's still on house arrest. He's oh, on right. house arrest yeah. right now. Right. Ankle monitor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these two guys have a secret podcast they've done. Yes. That secret because we did it twice, three times. <laughs> I have no, the I third we one. Four. We did four of them. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're on one of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, that one will never be released. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I don't know that any of them can be controversial. Yeah, yeah. They're very controversial. I think we had known each other for two weeks, and you <laughs> whipped out your phone. He's like, "Yo, let me, <laughs> let me play you something." Uh, they need to be. They need to hit the light of day. We might have to do a heavy edit on them, maybe. Yeah, but yeah, can, yeah. Maybe yeah. we can. Those guys are conspiratorial. Yes. Those guys on that pod, yes. yeah. they have a lot of conspiracies. Yeah, I don't know about Tommy as much. Tommy, not Tony T more so. Tony's got a lot of yeah. conspiracies. Tony knows. Yeah, yeah Tony T. T Tommy's the more benign of the two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you guys are, are doing a tour together in the fall, right? When does it start? Uh, October 1st. October 1st. Yeah. And it's a solo acoustic thing. Is it more... Like, what is the the stress level for you going with a full band mm. and and there's same. a lot? The doesn't same? matter. Really? It doesn't matter? No, nah, it's just playing songs for people. Really? Oh, yeah, cuz. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you knew you couldn't keep it back for too long. I knew that was going to come. <laughs> yeah, you you feel the same way going out, whether yeah. it's just you. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a little bit more like I got to do the whole thing. Yeah. You know, I can't have somebody play a two-minute guitar solo which i like but yeah it's the same thing man i'm just trying to like brighten people's days up a little bit play some songs for them you're a uh you're an aficionado of the local accent oh i was gonna i was wondering which angle you were gonna take yeah. on that I, i'm on i thought you can say early 90s r&b well, i don't, I don't <laughs> want to talk too. about coffee <laughs> yeah. you know and that this guy telling me what's good coffee and the larry and sanders coffee. show and yeah. Norm mcdonald <laughs> I have news for everyone. All coffee is exactly the same. <laughs> no. Yes, it's correct. Is. Red There's wine's the same. Coffee's the same. No There's way. There's no hints of anything in any of that. Two pump chump spike over here. Yeah. I mean, like, look, <laughs> you'll get a coffee and they'll be like, oh, there's hints of caramel and there's wicker and there's, it just tastes like coffee. Red wine's the same. But, uh, but you're an aficionado of the local accent. Everything is the same out there, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, All them got trees water look in it. exactly the same. Everything's got water Green in it. leaves. Yeah. See, I was wondering if this, could, if this keeps going, it'll definitely go off the rails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which part of this region do you think has the best version of the local accent? Ooh. Hmm. I have no idea. That is not true, and you know, you've said you have no idea. You that mean the northeast, like all of, like the well, no, all northeast, the Philly northeast Philly. So there's northeast, northeast is different than the like the think South, South Jersey, South Jersey. South Jersey. People different have than moved, South Jersey, though. different People than Delco. Have moved. Yeah, but shit's changed, man. Don't you think one area of the dialect is the be is better? Well, no. there's a Delaware too. There's a Delaware, you know. Well, Delaware's yeah. thicker. Yeah. De the closer you get to Baltimore. Delco? The, yeah, yeah Delco. It, it gets a little, you get a little of the south in there. I What's the know. defining trait of the Delco hoagie mouth? Exactly. I know I could do it. So my, my wife's family all has it. 
<laughs> is it like a mellower <laughs> lilt to like, yeah, hey, he's doing? Is it more like that? No, no, like no. See, it's not like that. Oh, it's not that. It's okay. mo- the Delco one is more of a slur. A slur? Yeah, oh. like like all the words sort of run together. Sometimes the, be- the words don't begin or end. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. My wife used to have it. I shamed her out of it. So like, I mean, you talk like this, you never really stop. Your mouth is always moving. Yeah, that is like. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's Delco it. right yeah, there. Yeah, that is Delco. <laughs> yeah, you did it, man. Yeah, listen, hey, you know me. You're going to get us short this week, and what are you doing? Hey, Ben, your, your job do good? Yeah. <laughs> it's almost, uh, it's almost like, like, like a different just, language. They're doing a lot of cocaine. It's almost like a different language. I'm going to record my brother-in-law. I'll, give, I'll get him <laughs> just talking straight for yeah, 20, we, and I'll let you be like Hoagy Mouth Chat GPT or whatever. <laughs> I'll let you consume all of the accent, and then you can spit it back Siri, out. Siri, how many miles have I ran today? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you have any questions for uh, for me oh, before you yeah, go? Oh yeah, I do actually. He's yeah, got like lots twenty of questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. First off, yeah. How do you feel as the host of a podcast that is the most demoralizing thing that's ever existed <laughs> on the planet Earth? You mean because it's about the Philadelphia Seventy Sixers? Yeah. Um, like you guys do an amazing job. You do I, two podcasts a week about something that we all. Eight. Right. And r- right now, there's actually nothing to talk about. We still do two <laughs> podcasts know, a week. And amazing. my co-host, even though I don't even want to talk about the team, <laughs> insists. We were about 15 minutes into the podcast today, and I started to pivot to non-Sixers material. <laughs> and he insisted we continue talk about the team. He's reluctant to make that pivot sometimes. The team yeah. hasn't played a game in three months, <laughs> hasn't signed any new players. One of the, new pl- one of the players wants to leave. Well, and there he was some drama there. There was a little bit yeah, of drama there. Yeah. For don't outside. they all want to leave secretly? On some level, I feel like we're responsible for keeping everybody happy happy during times of or at least reflecting their emotion during the hard times but also i feel like we are unwillingly keeping them engaged (laughs) in the team when they could be doing something else you are you're like the cia of the sixers yeah so i feel bad about it actually sometimes you should yeah yeah. We've got a lot of sponsors. Uh, what do you want me <laughs> you to gotta, do? You got to keep that train <laughs> rolling, yeah. man. You got to keep that rolling. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to retire at some point. <laughs> yes, so, yeah. That's right. That'd be awesome, actually, if you could just be like doing the podcast. And that's it. Well, that's what people do. It's yeah. the wildest thing. Yeah. People do a podcast as their whole job. Yeah, that's wild. It's wild. Well, it's a testament to the form and to the uh, yeah how popular it's become. We gotta if we charge. Like a lot more. Actually, if you could send an email to all of our sponsors tripling our <laughs> rates, yeah. I feel like at that point. I know I could Tony send. could send one to DraftKings and it would work out. Yeah, yeah. He oh, doesn't sure. email that. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Tony yeah. T needs to get more involved in promotions, man. Yeah. Um, well, you're going to. Um, and you've played, this, you've played this festivity one time? The Make the World Better? Uh, I've never played it. He's no, never man, asked yes, me you to. Did. You played at Union well, I played. I opened up. We opened up. Oh, okay. Well, that, that counts as playing. Yeah. It does? Well, yeah. That's you, all right. He's opening up your tour. Doesn't that count? Yeah. Yeah, but we were <laughs> yeah. like a last-minute addition. Nah, I think it was cool. We caramelized I, it. But I played good. basketball at, the, at a playground opening one time with the Eagles. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. Connor's the shit, man. Yeah, what they a, used like, to we're so lucky to have him in town. I was going to say that. We'll, uh, yeah. we'll get him up here because there are, and I wanted to ask him, but there, as a testament to him and as something that, that you just mentioned, and not this, I don't mean this as a negative to other athletes, but a lot of athletes start foundations, but they're very hard to actually yeah. keep going and actually make a, a difference. Yeah. And his, like, they're, the, the way that they've s- continued to stick to it and push forward and actually not just continue to exist, but thrive is really impressive. You yeah, know? it's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's badass. It is badass. Yeah. I, I appreciate it, honestly. Like, growing up an Eagles fan and just having the Eagles be a constant, like, pain in my fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> it's been amazing over the past, like, five years to be like, holy shit. It's been a good All time. the Eagles it's are been cool. been a very good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The team is kicking ass. Yeah, it's a wild How change. This, what happens? Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful Now the time. Sixers beautiful are the time. worst. Yeah. But the, the Eagles, it did. It, it all changed. We were, we were at the game in Minnesota and the, the Super Bowl, and it really yeah. just did. It all changed. All the vibe is, is almost constantly good. God bless good. Nick Foles. God bless Nick Foles. God, God bless, bless Nick Foles. Nick Foles. God bless Nick Foles. Thank you, Nick. We love you. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Well, thanks for coming, buddy. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for buddy. having me, pal. Yeah. Thanks uh, for having thanks, me, pal. pal. Yeah, thanks, thanks pal. buddy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, we're going to we're gonna drag you over to the show later and watch a little music. Where's the shoulder massage you told me I was going to get? Uh, Bro, I'll give you a that's, shoulder massage. That's gun. afterwards. That's post pod. <laughs> I'll give you a shoulder <laughs> massage in front of everybody here. Let's go. Uh, are Let's we go. Really, really do it? Wow, you have fucking... Qu- is this yes. your handwriting? Yeah. yeah. You're a maniac, dude. What's wrong with I oh, told terrifying. Yeah, Let me tell you, anyone let, let, let who's notes. terrifying. Anyone who ever says deep state has terrifying <laughs> handwriting. <laughs> it's like Dilbert handwriting, dude. Was that good or bad? Bad. Oh really? Oh yeah, very bad. Do you think this handwriting is bad? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's better than I don't have good handwriting, so it's I don't terrifying. really I can't really comment. I've always wanted it's like pretty clear. I, I learned in, in when I was in grade school, girls have like great handwriting. It's always round and stuff. I've always wanted like girls that's what that is. Print handwriting. Yeah. That's what I want. That's really wild. Yeah. I wouldn't mm-hmm. expect that with all this. Would well, you want the shoulder thing? Yeah, let's go. Uh, okay, here we go. And uh, I want you to ask him a question while I'm massaging. Okay. okay. Amos, let's talk ah, about your latest yeah. jazz record. This is good. Uh, yeah, it's very Those s- tunes, those are beautiful arrangements, Chet Baker songs. Soft hands. I'm going to just try to ask a serious <laughs> question now. Uh, the <laughs> those were beautiful arrangements, uh, Chet Baker classic tunes. What was that like bringing uh, those? Don't touch my head. Whoa. <laughs> what was it like bringing those songs to the stage? I can't take you serious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me, man. I love you guys. Love you Thank guys, you, buddy. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Amos Lee. Hey, hey pal. How are you guys going to head over there? We're going to head over, I mean, 6.30, something like that. All right. Thank you, Amos. We've had two guests so far, and both have been covered in clothing head to toe. I'm not far from. I'm a little more summer. You got short sleeves, man. I got short sleeves. Yeah, it's a different thing. Um, Hey, is Connor around? Well, Connor, uh, we were promised Connor. Is that Spadaro? Is that Dave? There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, Spuds himself. Oh, Dave Spadaro. Hey, buddy. How are you? In it's the good house. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in forever. Congratulations on the wedding. Oh, congratulations to you as well. I saw a video on the internet. Somebody sent me a video on the internet the other day of the ceremony. You coming up? I'm coming up. What's up, oh, man? Yeah. Oh, how yeah. are you? Yeah, brother. Good to the see you. The man himself, yeah. Connor Barwin. <laughs> Oh, yeah. How are you, man? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you guys for doing this. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you for having yeah, us, man. Course, this is an inaugural sort of pre-show tailgate kind yes, of situation, yes. right? Yes, This is the, uh, the child of Jesse Randell right there. I think he came up with this idea, and it was a great idea. Come on, Jordan. Come oh, Jordan Malata as well. How about this? All right. <laughs> How's it going, man? I'm Jordan. Lou. Nice to meet you, brother. What's up? I'm Spike. I'm Jordan. What's up, man? Oh, I'll sit down. Sorry, excuse me. Oh, look at this. Uh, Jesse's a little worried about up. the couch right now. I hope this chair holds up. <laughs> oh, it'll be all right. It's no, very we sturdy. We got it. We got yeah, it. yeah, we it'll go. be good. How, we How we doing? We're good. We're good. excited. Yeah. This is cool to be doing this because there's a lot of connectivity here. Yeah. So, Mutlu, I don't even this is my daughter. Vera. Oh, hey. Um, yes. There she is. How's but, it going? But Mutlu sang at my wedding. That's even, right. I don't even know Ooh. how that came together. And then you met Amos... At, at your show. At our show. And then this sort of, yes, you know, you guys became and really close And to take it one step further, our, our guy Jeff Tubbs, I sang at his wedding. There you go. And uh, he wanted me to say I made his wife Emily cry, but in a good way because <laughs> tears of joy, yeah. right? That's, that's what Jeff was saying. So it, That actually brings up something important. So I was talking to Jesse about doing this, and I was like, hey, Moot actually sang at Connor's wedding. And he was like, I know I was at the wedding too. And I was like, why was I not at this wedding? <laughs> I don't know Connor that well, really, but I actually feel left out. So right now in front of everybody, why was I not at the wedding? Well, I, I, I think um, I didn't know you that well at no. the time, uh, no. but I will say I, I knew your dad really answer. well. And I'm, I'm, a huge, I'm a huge fan of your, of your dad, obviously. Uh, he's, he's been great, and I've got to know him really well. Yeah, 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 for sure. So um, can I ask you? I want to ask you guys a, a serious, like, football thing about me and about you. So you, you were a giant uh, at one point. Yes. So I'm, I'm from Philadelphia, you know, born, born and bred in Philadelphia, but I work in New York now. And the radio station I work at were the home of the New York Giants. And I work with them all the time. 
and obviously, but I'm born in Philadelphia and was at the Super Bowl and, you know. But I work with these people and I have like this thing where they're nice people and I feel happy for them when they succeed, but I feel like this conflict because of where I'm from and also what is in my heart. So I guess what I'm looking for is some sort of permission for that feeling. Yeah, you, you should feel however you want to feel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say for me, yeah. you know, I played in Houston. Yep. I played four years in Philly. Four years, it was the best four years of my career. Um, I moved back to Philly because I love Philly. I think I, I am thankful to have played that one year for New York. It, it was a, it was a cool, san uh, you know, an historic <laughs> franchise to play for. Yeah. But it is it is so different. Like yes. the amount of, you know, we weren't good the year I was on the Giants. But I had I had a year or two when we weren't good w in Philly. But the way you're so connected to the city in Philly yeah. versus New York, it's totally different. Like, when we lost in New York, it was like, ah, oh, man, it, it hurt. But in Philly, like, you felt you lost for, like, everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you really <laughs> felt like you lost for the entire city. Yeah. And that's powerful. You know yes. what I mean? And it's, it's cool, too. Do you, uh, you must feel that, right? Do you? Yeah, I feel the second half of what he said, not the first half. Uh, thankfully, yeah. this is the, the only team I've played for. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but yeah, man, when you lose in Philly, it's like, it's like you lose, like you lost the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's, there's uh, almost everybody in Philly is from Philly, you know, and I think that's part of it. And I think also what's part of it is there's, there's two football teams up there. So not everybody cares about the same thing, whereas here everybody cares about the same thing, you know, all the time. I think the bigger question is uh, Philly people who are born in Philly and root for Dallas. That's a new one. That there's is a, uh, blasphemous. There's a lot of them. <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of them. Yeah. You hear them on talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, how, do you, how does that happen? I, I need to understand. Spike, you would you know because being he, sports talk, how does a Philly person become a Cowboys fan? So here's, here's what people say about it. What people usually say is they were either the age when the Steelers and the Cowboys were on TV all the time and they, they got to like them then, or one of their parents got to like them at that time and that's how they were raised. I don't know how you can feel. Like, I, I don't know if that's an acceptable response, but that's sort of where it comes from. Uh, that sounds like a uh, bandwagon. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, just, that's just where I'm from. <laughs> I just feel like it's not that fun. Like, it's not that fun to be, right. a, you know, a, a Dallas fan in Philly. Nah, like, nah, that's, you know, this is this incredible be a hard community. Road. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, think exactly. that, that person exists exactly. 100%. You're just like the contrarian yeah. in the family, yeah. and so you pick – Playing what the everybody bad hates. guy is fun yeah. sometimes. Being the bad guy is fun. There is fun to that. Connor, uh, we were saying with Amos before you came up here that there are a lot of athletes that start foundations, you know, and there are a lot of athletes that try to do charity work. And I, I would say, you know, most times it comes from a really good place, but it's really hard to keep it going and actually, like, make a difference. What do you think has been... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know any songs? Can you sing a song? Can you sing a song? She knows one song. We'll see if she'll sing it. Can you sing? Can you sing your Christmas song? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> um, What's been that? Like, how how have you? What do you think yeah, has I been think, the I reason for the, the success? I think I have got really really good people around me. Yeah. Um, I think there's there's great people. Jesse Randell, Alize, who I'm looking at, Sydney, uh, Taylor. My mom has been very involved from the beginning. I just have great people uh, around me that have um, helped it continue. And I do think you're right. A lot of professional athletes, it always comes from the right place. But people are pulled in so many different directions. It yeah. gets really hard. And then when you're done playing, you know, the, it just changes things a lot. And you really have to be committed to it. You really have to build you know, something up before you're done playing to keep it going. And thankfully, we did, you know, this is the 10th year we've done this show. Amazing. Which is That's insane. Incredible. That's incredible, um, man. So I think, that. like, <laughs> that, that, that longevity matters. Yeah. And, you know, if I tried to do a show at the Dell, you know, and I, and I hadn't done it all these years prior, it would be hard to pull it off, and I was done playing football. But because I've been doing it for so long, I'm able to keep it going. Yeah. yeah it's really impressive. It is, you know. And uh, Philly's lucky. To, I know you're not a native, but Philly's lucky to have you for sure. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I will, I will say it's, it's 
you know, and what's really cool about this show um, is every every dollar truly goes to the to a, to a public park that we're working on. So we're finishing up a project at Bear Rec Center, and this show will generate over you know 100, 150 thousand tonight, and that 150 thousand dollars will go to Bear Rec Center. To, to like make it more special for the kids that get to play at that, they're gonna. It's gonna be such a special playground because of this show, uh, which is just an incredible feeling. And when you do something like that, people want to get behind that. And I think this yeah. is why this has been successful. Well, I was gonna say because uh, this is the fourth big project, right? That you yeah, guys are doing exactly. And this is for both of you, but I mean, but also in regards to the projects, but just being an athlete in the community, how important is that? Staying connected, staying tuned in, because I feel like you guys have a presence like I haven't seen most other athletes have, uh, connecting to communities and and to musicians and all these kind of things. Like, how important is that to you to use the platform that you have to do those kind of things? Well, I'll, I'll quickly just say this is one of the, the the best guys on the Eagles right now. That is all. Oh yeah. Out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's in the middle of training camp, and I asked him to come pop by, and he's popping by. He's just at you know 45 days of training camp, so. He's one of the best at, at getting out there and connecting with the fans and, and being a part of the community. Yeah, I just like to uh, stay grounded. I think, uh, you know, for me, it's just important to just get out in the community, um, to remind myself where I came from and what I was a part of. And just because I, um, I've been elevated and to another platform, as right. most people would say, I, I just like to come back and, and give mm. back whatever yeah. I can, even if it's just conversation. I just, That's a beautiful thing, me. man. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. She, you're really good at football, right, George? I'm all right. You're pretty like, good. I'm all right. You're pretty good at football. You're really good at singing, right? Which is wild. Hold on, hold on. This people might know this. He opened up for Neo at the Dell last summer. A lot of people don't know that. No. It's. I mean, it was a small gig. <laughs> 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 you know, it was last minute. It was, it was like, hell yeah, why not? I want to know something that you're bad at. You don't, don't, oh, I can't think ah. of anything. There's got to be something. I mean. <laughs> oh, this is. <laughs> he, was, he was bad at football five years ago. You yeah. got really good. You got really good. It only took me five years. It only took me five years. Short five years. No, I mean, I mean I'm bad at a lot of things, man. I'm bad at a lot of things. So I just, uh, if, there's, if there's something that I want to be good at, I just put all my effort into it, all my energy, and I, I'm very uh, competitive, so. At that point, it's just competition to, uh, until I get it right. Do you think, we were talking with Charlie, uh, Charlie Hall, who, who produced the Christmas record. We were talking to him. I've worked with football players at, in radio, uh, former football players, and he worked with you guys on the, the Christmas album. We were talking about how, like, how you guys like to be almost coached and, and like having, <laughs> almost like having a, a game plan, you know, and... Uh, and working at it. Do you feel like football in that way makes you better at, at other things? You know? Yeah, I mean, in football, you got to be coachable for sure. Yeah. Um, you can't take offense to coaching. Um, and, and when you look at the guys, look at Lane and I, Lane and I and, and Kelsey. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're not, we're singers by. <laughs> Duet. Duet. <laughs> Incredible. She, not to be outdone, man. Yeah. She didn't hey, want to be I outdone. She heard about your singing. Oh. Yeah, we had a little lamb, little lamb, <laughs> little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. She was white as snow. Yeah. yeah. And everywhere that Mary went. Mary Wait, that's the second verse? Mary <laughs> went. That's the second everywhere verse. Everywhere that what? Mary <laughs> went, the sheep was sure to go. I thought it was a one verse wonder. Yeah. No, there's two <laughs> verses. I guess the second verse never made it to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or I didn't pay attention in preschool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, there's not a third verse, I don't think. <laughs> 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 who are you? Who, as a, who are your favorite, like, you know, you're you're obviously a good singer. Who do you like listening to? Who do you like? Who are your favorite singers? Man, I, I grew up listening to Bon Jovi. Really, yeah, big Bon Jovi guy. There you go. And uh, then when I learned that he was across the water, I was like, oh, what? This is Jersey. cool. Jersey, yeah. Yeah, Jersey boy. Um, big Bon Jovi guy. But uh, now I kind of listen to everything. Um, but right now it's more into like that country. country oh, really? Twang, yeah. Is that because 
Is it football? American yeah. football players love country. I, I thought I knew what country was when I when I got here. I was like, yeah, I listened to country before, and then um, yeah, it turns out I didn't know what country was, and yeah, now I, I love country. Really, yeah. Jordan might lot a country record. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that'd be terrible. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a terrible uh, accent right there. <laughs> We've talked a lot about uh, Australian artists on uh, on our podcast on we our had music a gang podcast. of youths song with gang us. Gang of youths and uh, Silver Chair and Silver Chair. Uh, Silver Chair is my favorite band ever. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of great music uh, from crazy. Australia. Mall Rat, uh, a lot of great music. Never from heard Australia. of Never Mall heard Rat. Of Mall Rat. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. I was going to ask you guys, uh, maybe this is a silly question, but Rev Up, you're getting ready for the game. Mm. What are the songs? What is the playlist? Did you guys have a playlist or some like, particular tunes that would get you amped up and, and can get in the zone mentally? Um, I mean, for me, it just depended on, uh, on, the, on the mood that I was in. So sometimes if I'll, I'll listen to like... Uh, is it ED? Is that what they call it these days? EDM? And EDM, EDM, yeah. Like, yeah. I listen to something like fast, fast pace to kind of get me going, but then uh, sometimes it'll get me going too much. So then I'll just I'll listen to uh, just like church songs to bring me back kind down level, level again. Level yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just feel like I get too amped up before the game, and then uh, I got to ground myself again. Just listen to something slow, and uh, church music always. Well, music helps. is a part of that process. Yeah, as you for get sure. In, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I used to. Uh, I grew up in Detroit. Uh, graduate from high school 105, so of course Eminem was a big part of oh, my yeah. life growing uh, up. Uh, you know, that seems like, like the great. quintessential. I mean, <laughs> it was like the best sort of yeah, yeah. get get revved up. But you know, I'm a I'm, I became a big indie rock fan when I started playing in the NFL, and and it really I didn't listen to it before I got in the NFL, and the, it happened because I was in Houston, used to go to a venue called Fitzgerald's, a great venue that was like a thousand people, and that was all where like the good indie rock bands played. Uh, and then so I sort of fell in love with that genre. But where I'm going with this is, you know, other than Eminem, I sort of listened to like poppy indie rock music before I played because it kind of makes you feel good and like gives you good energy. But to your point, like I could get Eminem could take me too far. Right. And I had to like, you know, call, call him back down a little bit. Uh, and in similar, I've heard Kelsey talk about this and where a little bit of the Christmas album came from. He listens to Christmas music before he plays and the idea really? was like you're just getting a good mood like well, you, you just feel good <laughs> and you're not going too high or too low you know what i mean that's that an unexpected one i wouldn't expect christmas songs but hey, somehow you know? it, it feels like it adds up for like yeah, yeah. you telling me that kelsey does it it, it seems it seems I mean, like if you it. think that's weird lane not to air out air him out but he started he got us onto these uh, like mongolian chants like, towards the end uh. of the year last year and I'm telling you now, it, it like it locks you in. Like you Mongolian just the, the, the hum, the humming. You know when they like. Is yeah. it like the throat singing? Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, oh man, that's deep. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Oh, wow, that's that impressive. <laughs> I was, dude, it, it worked. I was like, oh, see, I don't know how Lane got into it, but uh, it, it worked. Next thing you know, there was three of us listening to these uh. Throat singing? Uh, <laughs> it's working, man. It's working. Do it again. That was crazy. Do it. Can you do it again? Can you? Welcome to I feel the like you're the guy from Police Academy <laughs> that could make like the, the the engine noise with his mouth. You're too young. There's for a Beastie that. Boys, yeah. uh, a couple Beastie Boys jams that have that yeah. that throat singing. I guess yeah. called, right throat singing. Dude, it works. I'm telling you, it works. I was shocked. Oh. I was shocked when he when he was. I said, like, "Lane, what are you listening to?" And he just showed me. I was like, "That's weird." And then I was like, oh. <laughs> I found myself googling the same thing. I was like, "Oh, bloody hell, it works." So was it you guys kind of just all together, kind of like almost meditative, rocking that? Before <laughs> 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 that, that really it seems like a no. scary scene. Honestly, everybody's yeah. sitting down. Sort of I guess that's how I pictured yeah. it when you yeah. said it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask Jordan a question. What do you what do you think about what's happened to the locker room music? Uh, the last few years, because as a as a bystander, I'm not I, I'm not involved or have any voice in this anymore. But I walk in the locker room, and it's, I don't know. There's maybe yeah. something needs to happen. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just rap twenty four seven. Oh well, twenty four seven. I mean, you 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 play like Hall and Oates. It's it's like I don't know. You, well, you play something other than rap, and it's like a crime. You try you've, to play. Well, Hall I love rap music. You've broken love, one of the Ten Commandments. No, I love it. You got to rock some Hall notes yeah, in the locker yeah, but room, like, right? Yeah, but like, here's Jason Peters controlled the locker room forever. Yeah. Forever. And then he and he forever. he had such a diverse 
yes. playlist. It was it was for everybody. It was great, yeah. which maybe people wouldn't expect from Jason Pierce, but it was perfect. Now it's changed. Uh, yeah. In a, and most, Mike, you know, it's like one guy listening to music really loud, and then everybody else has headphones on because no one wants to listen to his music. You know, and my guess is, and I'm going to sound like an old man here, but my guess is it's not like, if it was rap music from like the 90s, that would be fun. But the rap music now, like what's, the kids, what's wrong with it? I don't know about the kids, you know? <laughs> kids these days, they don't know what good what, rap music is. What's wrong with rap music these days? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, you mentioned Kelsey, and we, we um, it would be crazy to not ask you about it. It was announced this week, the, the doc that's coming out, the trailer came out, the Kelsey documentary. What was the, um, like the genesis of that idea? Because it, man. Got me hyped. I was watching that yeah. thing. I was just like. A lot of people, a, <laughs> a lot of people like really messaged good. me and said like they cried during the two minute trailer, <laughs> which was surprising to me. But I will say as someone that watched all the rough cuts many times, it wasn't until probably the sixth or seventh time I watched it that I wasn't like actually cry. Like there's it's an emo there's an emotional part of the movie, and if you thought the trailer got you, the film will really uh, hit you pretty hard. But so two and a half years ago, the story goes, uh, you know, Kelsey thought he was he thought it was his last year. Yeah. And when you played as long as he has, he's sort of seen, you know, a lot of really good players have struggled transitioning out of the league. Yeah. And Kelsey being just one of the most curious, thoughtful people I know, he said, you know, maybe, you know, we'll start filming my sort of transition and sort of acknowledge what the problems are and maybe it'll be sort of solutions. And so we just, we hired uh, Don Argo and Sheena Joyce, Sheena Joyce to start filming him and his family away from the facility. And we didn't really know what we were doing, wasn't really that organized. And then thankfully, he came back to play last year. And at that point, we had sort of everything organized. And, Don, and Kelsey and his family were comfortable with Don and his crew. And sort of caught everything for the whole last season. And then as the playoffs happened, Don was like, I don't think this is a retirement story anymore. This is just a story about Kelsey, his family, and really the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. And... We, we had our crew at Chickie and Pete's after the playoff game. NFL Films showed up with their crew to get oh, wow. Kelsey because they were like, oh, we have to document the league. The brothers might run into each other at the Super Bowl. Right. So when we, we all ran into each other, we were like, okay, maybe let's partner up and, and make a really, a really big film. And, and that's how it all came together. How has he been, you know, uh, you playing with him and you sort of not just coming into the league, but coming to Philadelphia and basically like learning the position and learning football. How, how was Kelsey as a teammate to you? Um, he's, he's the epitome of a leader. I mean, yeah. true leader. Like he leads by example. Um, he won't only just tell you, he will show you how it's done. And I, I've just been incredibly lucky to have a locker room where, I had Jason Kelsey, I had Lane Johnson, Brandon Brooks, Jason Peters, Isaac Somalo, Big V, even Stefan Wisniewski. Like the locker room I went into, the culture that they'd set was phenomenal. And um, man, to be playing next to Kelsey? It's really, it's really cool for me Crazy. as somebody that works with these guys now and observes all of it. I was just talking to him earlier today, and it's so, you know, Kelsey, of course, is getting closer to the end uh and like him and landon and now like there's like a nun he's like this is the next guy you know what i mean and it's already sort of happening with the young guys you know kelsey's sort of like so <laughs> far ahead that yeah. now this is the guy that guys look up to the young guys and talk to and he's helping young guys and making them doing the same thing kelsey did for him he's doing for the great young leaders. guys i had great leaders that told me the, the way yeah this is the way well that the thing that makes me feel good looking back on it, I remember like you, you said Kelsey was close to retirement or whatever. It makes me think of him and BG, right, and Brandon Graham. And I remember interviewing, when I worked at a rock station, Brandon Graham's rookie year, uh, interviewing him at, um, what's it called, uh, the, where training camp was up in uh, Lehigh. At Lehigh. And, and just guys that... 
I'm just glad it happens in Philadelphia and with the Eagles. Like it's something about the culture that's been over the years that guys not only stay but continue to thrive. You know, and uh, like if you would, if you would, for some reason it's just not surprising to me that Kelsey keeps playing. You know what I mean? It keeps playing well, and uh, I think it's neat that it happened here. Like the, what the Eagles have become, especially. You know, you weren't here before, but what it was in the past and then what it is now is just really cool. I, th- I think, you know, Howie deserves a lot of credit. Jeffrey deserves a lot of credit for believing in, in BG and Kelsey. I mean, we, I share this story with our young guys, but because our young guys don't remember, you know, BG in 2014 was going to get cut. Was like, I mean, you probably remember, was like yeah. going to get cut. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and well, he, made, he was like the, he, he was like the micro fi- yeah he had micro yeah. fracture but he was like the 53rd guy on the team to make the team that year um and jason peters convinced him dude just start running down kickoff like a crazy person <laughs> and he did and he started destroying people and it just turned his whole his whole thing around and he ended up making he just finished his 14th camp for the eagles he's made the greatest play Sheesh. in the history of eagles with the, with the strip sack against Tom Brady. And he was like the 53rd guy to make the team his fifth year in the league, which is insane. And then Kelsey at the same time, in 2016, when I think he almost did retire, was that year he – see you, BG. Thanks for coming. There he is. <laughs> Th- that's a future WIP host right there. <laughs> <laughs> I got you locked in afternoons for about seven years. Are you ready? Like, are you, all right, okay. <laughs> BG's heard me tell that story many times. I love sharing it. Uh, <laughs> But Kelsey, in 2016, he almost retired because he had, he had he, he, you know, he'd say it wasn't a great year, and the fans just piled on him. Yeah. And then he decided to sort of figure it out and came back, and he's made Pro Bowl, All-Pro every, every year since. But there's something with Philly that does that to guys, that if you can sort of get through those tough moments with the city, it really, it really helps you in the long run. Well, this feels like a special moment this year coming up for all of us following the you know, team our whole lives. As a player, but also in the front office, player development what what is this moment like as you enter this season because it's right around the corner like what thoughts what feelings is it it's one of the elite franchises right now in football it's got to be a special feeling i mean to be honest i mean not to not to be blind but it's just like we're going back to work yeah it's like what what we did last year doesn't matter anymore like we got to focus on the guys that we have in the room um and the guys who were a part of it last year uh, do a tremendous job of just keeping the main thing the main thing you know like we had a tremendous season last year and we fell short, but you know that was last year. Like we got to keep moving forward and keep as repetitive as it sounds because you know we, we repeat the same messages over and over again because we believe in it. You know we got to get one percent better each day, daily deposits. Like you, you hear all our guys say that because it's what we buy into, it's what we believe in, it's what we we actually do. So yeah, I think we can't we can't. Yeah. One day at a time. You can't right. even you, you can't even go there. Up. Like yeah. you're so yeah. so. I mean, I'm. I can a little bit, but like <laughs> I was like I was like that when I was playing. Like yeah. you just you can't focus on anything but like what's right in front of you because it's so you know you never know what's going to happen. It's so hard. It's so competitive. Well, it's one thing to say though. <laughs> I think about to a much lesser extent, right? I remember playing Super Mario Brothers. It, if you get to the last level of Super Mario Brothers and you die and you have to start at the first level again, you start playing the first level and you're like, oh, man, screw this, and you turn off the Nintendo and walk away. <laughs> and, like, just the idea, you say one day at a time. Everybody can say that, right? You can say 1% better. Anybody can say that. But actually being able to get to the top last year, fail in, in, the, in the Super Bowl, and then have to start at the beginning and you have to do camp again and you have to play regular season games again you can't just start back where you left off i don't know it's just a special challenge and takes a special mental sort of focus and fortitude that is on has to be on everybody right it's not just on the players on the coaches on everybody around right it just seems it seems really it seems a lot easier to say than it is to do i mean 100 percent. i mean that's why it, it helps make it easier if we lived by that before the Super Bowl. That was just the way we worked. Right. We uh, don't look too far down the road. Just for take it one day at a time. That's just the way we lived, and we that's what we practiced every day. So yeah, you can say like yeah, we got to the top and we fell, but we're just going back to what we know, and what we know is go back into the daily grind again. Right. 
do what makes us uh, what makes us a great team is sticking to the processes, and that's our process. And so we know what works now. We did it last year. Go back to the process. Start again. Well, no pressure, but all this winning over the last several yeah. years has really <laughs> softened up Philly. Yeah. You reckon? Oh, boy. If you think... <laughs> you reckon? Oh, very, very soft here now. But it's nice. No, it's so you not only have the pressure of winning, but you have pressure of keeping Philadelphia from bubbling over. Keeping everybody sane. It's like it's Ghostbusters 2, The Secret of the Ooze. Uh, uh, and, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Turtles. Yeah, crime Watch is at the... Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That was a little Christmas time is here by Vera Barwin right there. Oh, nice job. Very beautifully done. Good job. Maybe a preview. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Um, well, we love you guys. Philly is lucky to have both of you. Um, thank you for having us. Thank you course. for inviting us to be thank part of this. Thank you for having us. What What are you going to do, Spike? Are you going to stay in New York? What? Uh, are you coming back to Philly? I'm curious <laughs> about your story and how that happened and what, what's going on there. So the thing you mentioned about uh, New York, I thought New York, Northeast City, Northeast City, right? Um, love sports, love sports. But I got up there, and I remember the first week I was up there running. I'm a runner, and I was running outside in the city. And it was so weird to me that I didn't pass anybody wearing, like, team gear. Because in Philly, you can't walk 10 feet without somebody wearing something of the team. And that whole thing about it not feeling like one moving thing is very different. And uh, I love what I'm doing up there, and I love the experience. But one thing that it has taught me is that eventually I will have to come back here. You there know, you like, I, this is where I'm from, and this is... I, I do love it, and I have great teammates up there at the radio station. We're doing great things, and I love where I am. But uh, every, I, moved, I lived in Chicago for a little while and made me appreciate Philly. And living up there really makes me know that this is where I'm from, you know? And I think it's why Philadelphia people, because never, you can move somewhere else, but it never feels quite right, you know? It never feels like it is here, so. I, I'm jealous of, you know, Kelsey that he's played here his whole career, yeah. Brent Selleck, you know, some of these guys that uh, have played there the whole time. But... I'm also kind of happy that I got to play in the other cities because it makes you, you know, there was great stuff in those other cities, but it does, you know, talking about your experience in New York, it makes you appreciate all of sort of the great things about Philly or the things that are different and unique about Philly uh, for me as a player compared to those other cities. Yeah, the difference for me is like when I'm down here, I can, Philadelphians could say, oh, that sucks about Philly or that sucks about Philly. But when I'm at work, my boss is from B Brooklyn, born and raised, and is like a New York he is not a snob. He's a down-to-earth guy, but he will say bad things about Philly. If somebody from Philly said that to me while I was down here, I'd be like, yeah, you're right. Chris <laughs> says it. I'm like, screw you, man. Don't say that. You know, like, I want to I fight him. So, so yeah, it, it, there is something about this place that it is a big city, but you almost can't get away with everybody knows each other you know there is a link to everybody there is a six degrees of separation in philly it's almost like two degrees i think this event separation. is kind of a testament to that you said all the interconnections you know yeah everybody here it's beautiful yeah. everybody's performing at everybody's wedding yeah that's right <laughs> and you're not allowed to leave man jordan you're not allowed to leave yeah, once you you, once it gets its hooks in you here you're not allowed to go anywhere so <laughs> look they're already recruiting you here you go, here you go. <laughs> oh speak of the devil I, my time is done here. Thanks for having me. Hey, uh, look at this. Oh, what's up, man? What's up, man? Like I'll just keep in your seat one, bruv. Am I getting on? Or yes, you are, sir. Where Where you we got Come join us. Yeah. Where'd you get that? Thank you, brother. No, this. The beer. The microphone? Thanks, man. Well, the microphone's okay. I'm more about the beer. Thank you, man. <laughs> Human robot. I was just there What's yesterday. Up, Good to see you. Thanks for coming. What's up? Good to How see you. How you doing, man? What's Good up? to see you. What's see up? You. Good to see you, brother. All right, brother. We were just talking about, uh, you know, when, when you guys started filming the doc, the yeah. documentary, and how you thought it would be sort of the, uh, the beginning of, uh, maybe the beginning of, like, your final season, you know? Yeah. And uh, it feels like that has happened a couple of times with you. It has, yeah. And you just keep coming back and not just coming back, but thriving, you know? What, 
what has kept you coming back and how do you think you've been able to not only just keep coming back but keep coming back and being good? Well, um, I think the number one thing that keeps me coming back is I still want to play. I think after you think about it and, you know, you consult with former guys that have made that decision and, uh, you know, your teammates, coaches, family, my wife, Kylie, you know, um, it just becomes more apparent that I'm not ready to stop yet. I still really enjoy coming to work, enjoy working uh, with my teammates, my coaches. Um, And then I think to your your question about what keeps me thriving and playing well, man, I'm in a great situation. I've been the same offensive line coach for over a decade now. A lot of great players surrounding me. Jalen Hurts makes everybody's job easier. So um, I think there's a lot of things that go into that. And I think um, obviously I work really hard and um, I've had a lot of success, but I know that I'm also in a great situation. There we go, Wes. There it is. (laughs) Well, I mean, do you ever like take a step back? Do you ever have an opportunity to do that and go, man, there's, I'm one of the greatest Eagles of all time. You know, I won the Super Bowl, and now there's a documentary about me. And I'm, yeah. and I'll, I'll just say this, and I'll say it so you're not saying it. <laughs> like, you are, without question, one of the most beloved athletes who has ever been in this city, like, and forever. And do you get a chance, I guess, to just take a step back for a moment and, and, uh, and gain perspective on that? I mean, you know, I think it – I think I've looked back on my career and um, there's a lot of things that I look back on and I usually look back on it in terms of the people that have helped me have success and and, and get to this point, Uh, whether it's teammates, coaches, friends, family, um, the city, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's been a very long road and a, in a, in a long journey. And, um, you know, I'm I'm very proud of how it's all gone. I really am. But, um, I don't know. I, I try not to think of myself in terms of that. I just, you know, I there are so many great players that I've played with um, that I don't think get the credit they deserve. Um, and, um, yeah, I, you know, the, the greatest thing is, is very hard to – one of the greatest because I, I don't even know that I'm one of the greatest offensive linemen on the teams that I've been on. I mean, I, I truly feel Brandon Brooks, Lane Johnson, Jason Peters – um, Evan Mathis, Todd, like there's so many guys that I've played with that are better than me in a lot of regards. And, um, you know, I fit in really well and do a piece that allows me to flourish. Uh, but I know that it, it ultimately my success is, is largely dictated on the positions I get put in and the guys I'm around. So I, whenever I think about it, I often think about that. I think the beautiful thing, though, is you all – are better because of each other, right? Like they sure. can say the same thing about you too. And that's that's something about the position that you play. Yeah. You know, where you're all very dependent on each other in that way. I think Kelsey talked to me about this a couple of years ago, which uh Thanks, man. You know, the offensive line in the NFL is one of the last groups, you know, in foot in, in sports, but really in football where you know, stats, everything sort of hasn't taken over and it's 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 changed recently. But yeah. PFS it's such a, it, yeah, it's such a selfless group yeah. that when they do all sort of buy in and play together, you know, they, they're so much better. The sum of, of the whole or whatever that saying is so much powerful than just having like a couple of really good players. We, we and have, he's been a part of that his whole career here in yeah. Philly, which I think, you know, obviously he's been the main one keeping it all together. I, I've been really for. I mean, I got drafted by Howard Mudd, a coach that – I mean, if offensive linemen go in the Hall of Fame, he'd be one of them. The number of Hall of Famers he's coached is way up there. Um, I've been coached for the last decade by, in my opinion, the best offensive line coach in the NFL. And he utilizes me to my strengths and puts guys – I mean, he puts a unit together and calls plays and designs plays that allow his guys to flourish. And um, I'm very, very fortunate to be in the position I've been put in and to have that opportunity. I mean, I look around the league – I think there's a lot of really good offensive linemen in the NFL, and um, you know maybe they're not in the right situation. Maybe you know, when you're not set at the quarterback position, playing offensive line is hard. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've seen that through you know the downfall of the team from when Doug was here, and kind of the struggles that the entire team had, and then also I mean largely a lot of the same guys, but then the uh, the rising of Jalen Hurts and some of the unique things and dynamic things he's done. 
has allowed a lot of us to get back to the level that we were playing at uh, previously. So it's, it's a position that is, is so determined, especially in my position, the center position, on the guys around you, the, the, like, the dynamics of the team, how often you're playing with a lead, how often you're able to run block and not be in situations where defenses know you're pass blocking and they're just going to tee off and get sacks. Like, it, it, there's so much that goes into it, and I've been really, really fortunate. I wonder if you could uh, speak a little bit about, because we were talking about this earlier, community. Yeah, man. You're, you're such a big presence in the community here, and you meant so much to the city. Uh, make, like, start your career. Could you imagine you would have made this kind of connection with Philly? Because uh, it's, it's unique what you've done here. You know, I, t- I tell this story a lot whenever somebody asks me that question, but the day I was drafted to Philadelphia, my agent, Jason Bernstein, I don't know if you made it up today or not. Did you become? Also Connor's agent. I've just been following in Connor's footsteps for the most part my whole career, but... <laughs> Um, you know, JB said, you know, you're, you're going to fit in. You have no idea how good of a fit this is going to be for you. So he called it from the moment. And, you know, I think I'm, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, very much born on the back of industry and blue collar working people. And um, there's a lot of similarities uh, to what those fan bases want in their athletes and what they respect out of their athletes. And um, I think that the same guys that I love growing up, and appreciated, largely end up being the same guys that I emulated. It's the same guys that are loved and respected in Philadelphia. It's a beautiful thing, man. And one thing I got to ask, uh, if you can j- teleport back to that moment, the speech, the, the parade <laughs> uh, speech. Yeah. Can you think about that? Because so, that's an iconic moment. In, yeah, in I mean, you know, it was a huge moment, not just for me, but the team that year. And, um, you know, I was – I couldn't sleep for, you know, nights before that. You know, I felt like I had all these narratives running through my head and wanted to let it out. I went to the team and asked if I was going to be able to speak. And, um, you know, I in some ways, it you were like, you know, how did you write that down? How did you come up with that? And like, dude, I didn't have to come up with anything. I lived it. Like, so that was told. That was I, that felt like it was off the cuff. Yeah, you, I mean, yeah. I had been thinking about it, but these narratives have been running through my head my whole my whole career, that whole season, my teammates' careers. Like, you know, I didn't invent anything up there. All of it was just a regurgitation of a, an unbelievable season and an unbelievable story. And you know, you know that team and the underdog spirit that embodied it, and ended up being the narrative. I mean, it just sit, fits so perfectly in with the city of Philadelphia and its narrative. And for that to be the first championship team or Super Bowl winning team of Philadelphia and the Eagles organization, I, I don't think it, you could have found a better story, to be honest with you. It really was. It was like a, it was out of a movie. It was like it had that kind of feel to it, you know. <laughs> I, I can tell you from my perspective. So I was working at WIP at the time. And we had a broadcast going at the TGI Fridays on the parkway. Yeah. But I couldn't go because I had to man the ship back at the station. Yeah. So Kelsey gets up and starts the speech. And w- <laughs> we have 30 <laughs> seconds of dump that we can get rid of like seven seconds at a time, <laughs> which means we can get rid of four curse words. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so I go into the studio with the producer who has his finger nervously <laughs> shaking over the button. <laughs> And there's one, got to go. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. And at a certain point, when you run out of that, you got to make a decision to bail yeah. or just keep going by the, the seat of your pants. Yeah. And we made it through, man. <laughs> <laughs> we made it through. Yeah. I learned the lesson of Chase Utley in 08. Uh, so we sat there with the button, but we, we didn't get up. We had to get rid of some of it, but we stayed, li- we stayed with you the whole time. I appreciate time. So that. I, I appreciate you only cursing the number of times that you did. So yeah, yeah. I, I tried to limit it, but I felt like a tasteful amount. Yeah. Well, dude, you are, I tell people all the time, uh, I remember, you remember Prime Stash? I was about to say, yeah. Absolutely. Dude, it was Selick's uh, restaurant, restaurant, Chino, on a, yeah. a restaurant on, on Chestnut Street. And we used to go in Prime Stash all the time. Yep. And Kelsey would just be sitting there eating dinner by himself at the bar. And you were just, I would tell people all the time, that guy that, that he appears to be, he is. Like, you are, you are the guy that you appear to be. And uh, you don't really run into that all the time. And you are, like Connor, you are a fixture here. And uh, 
I'm, I'm proud that you're you're a part of Philadelphia and that you've had that career here, man. Because thank it's, you very much. It's really cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 very fortunate, man. And um, I don't know, man. I wouldn't have drawn it up any better. And um, yeah, I plan on being here long after I'm done playing. And you know, Philadelphia is home for me and my family. And um, yeah, man. Absolutely. You know what's even better than one Super Bowl, though? <laughs> uh, that's right. <laughs> so, you know, keep playing really, really well. Thank you, buddy. So, thank you, man. I appreciate you coming, and thank you for uh, both of you, all that you've done. Thank you, guys. Truly a thank pleasure, you, honor to be here with you. Thank you, Spike, for doing this. Mutlu, thank you for doing this. Everybody, thank you for thank being you. here. This is the first yeah. year we've done this, yeah. this tailgate. This, this turned out great. Thank you, Spike. This is awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you.